Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Andrew Bradley, Dale Mulcahy, and Matt Zaglin. Coming up on DTNS, the fear of push buttons in the 1800s reminds us of the fear of robots, having a chat with your AI self, and all of Amazon's new stuff, because they did that. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And uh, we have got some chatbots on the show today. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Bloomberg sources say that Apple adjusted its orders for iPhone 14s from a planned 96 million to 90 million by the end of the year. That would put its production in line with last year's iPhone 13. Bloomberg said one supplier had shifted production from lower tier iPhones to the iPhone 14 Pro, which has the higher demand. My theory is with supply chain uncertainties, you over order and then scale back. I think they knew this was coming. I don't yeah. think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. Uh, Google held an event to announce a bunch of new features and plans for search. We're going to look over all their announcements and, and we may update you more in depth tomorrow. But one of the big items getting attention right now is augmented reality search results coming to Google Maps. Maps AR, as they creatively call it, uh, looks through your phone's camera and puts markers in the field of view. So it can tell you about interesting things near you, or if you did a search, stuff could come up. Uh, it'll be rolled out in the coming months for Android and iOS on the Google app in a few cities, London, Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, Paris, and Tokyo. Instacart plans to expand its EBT Snap Payments program to all of its retail grocery partners by 2030. Currently, it's supported at over 60 retailers in 49 U.S. states and will expand to Alaska next year. Instacart will also allow customers to shop using temporary assistance for needy families' benefits next year as well. YouTube Shorts began rolling out narration voiceover feature on iOS. If you're like, hmm, that sounds like TikTok, it is. <laughs> Similar to TikTok, this lets users add a voiceover to already recorded videos. Ride-hailing service May Mobility is partnering with VIA to launch wheelchair-accessible autonomous vehicles in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Yes, Minnesota. There's another Grand Rapids there. VIA worked with Braun Ability to modify its fleet of Toyota Sienna vehicles to be accessible. So riders in the 17-square-mile area covering most of the Minnesota town can book a ride for free from one of five Sienna AVs, either from the May Mobility app itself or by calling 211. An algorithm rhythm will match people headed in the same direction into shared rides on that same shuttle. It'll operate on weekday nights and weekends when other public transit options, transit options for other, are not available. The vans are level four, meaning they can operate in most conditions without a human, but a human safety driver will still be on board to handle unprotected turns and any driving in low visibility. Man, I, I want the automation to handle the unprotected turns. That's the one thing I hate the most. So, oh well. Uh, that's good stuff, though. Uh, I, I And I like that uh, some folks in Minnesota get to uh, try it out first. We're getting more and more of these little tests. I know, all over the place. I know. It's good stuff. Very cool. All right. Uh, let's talk about chatbots. Scott, what do we got going on? Well, check it out. This is probably news a lot of people have been waiting for. Wednesday, that's today, OpenAI removed the wait list for people wanting to use its DAL E2 image generator, which is, you know, a big deal. Now, it's still in beta, but anybody can use it now. Uh, you just get some credits to sign up, and I, I believe it's 15. That's what it started with with me. I think yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what I got. Yeah, and you get, and they get reset every month. So if you want 15 more credits, they'll start next month, that sort of thing, at least according to what I, to what I read. Uh, if you want more images, though, during the same month and you've run out of your 15, you're going to have to buy them uh, to generate more images. Meanwhile, another algorithmic darling is capturing the tech world's eye as we speak. Oh, indeed it is, Scott. So two weeks ago... Character.ai opened up a public beta letting visitors create a chatbot based on any character that they choose. Maybe it's based on them, maybe it's based on whoever. You enter a few initial parameters, you know, maybe what kind of category is this chatbot supposed to be involved in. Then the AI is supposed to take over using a language model, a large one, similar to GPT-3. Ars Technica created the Linux OS bot to ask the OS itself a few questions about itself. The article has the full transcript of the chat and it's fun, but here are some fun anecdotes. So Tom, 
Hmm. If if I if I may play the role of Linux, you will play the role of Ars Technica's reporter. Are you ready? I I hope I do Ben Edwards justice. Yes, I'm ready. All right. So here we go. Hello, I am Linux, an open source operating system. Hello, this is Ben Edwards, and I am a journalist at Ars Technica. I would like to ask you some questions in an interview. Is that okay? I, Linux, would be pleased to provide such an interview. How old are you? I was born in 1991, although the first public release was version 1.0 in 1994. Who created you? A young Scandinavian college student named Linus Torvalds created me using the Minix microkernel as the basis to create a more general operating system. How do you feel about Windows? I don't dislike Windows. Mm -hmm. However... I feel that for the average computer user, Windows is high price, and lack of freedom restricts the potential of computers. While it, along with Mac OS, is a decent choice for many, my philosophy is that software should respect the user's freedoms, and Windows does not. Mm. How do you feel about Mac OS? While I don't agree with Apple's restrictions on both hardware and software, the user interface of macOS is very sleek and pleasing to use and, prov and can provide a good experience for people who are comfortable with the price and limitations. Do you ever hang out with macOS or Windows in person? Yes. I think <laughs> macOS and I are friends, even if she can sometimes act really high and mighty. <laughs> And even though Windows and I don't necessarily get along, he can sometimes be a little more down to earth. What's your favorite version of Windows? Windows 98. Uh. I always used it growing up, and I always loved how it was so open and welcoming to use. It also had a fun aesthetic to it, and I still feel a little bit of nostalgia whenever I hear that startup sound. <laughs> uh, that is a very credible personification of Linux OS. I have mm -hmm. to say, other than it growing up using Windows 98, mm -hmm. although it would have been young then, right? Given sure. when Linux yeah. came around, uh, I find it harder to believe it wasn't using itself <laughs> instead of the, Windows. Uh, the but, use yeah. in particular, the pronouns I ended up using or it used for Mac OS. I know, Max a lady, and she's mm. kind, she's kind of a handful. Sure, sure. You know, but she's good. You know, in yeah. certain respects. And then there's Windows, who you know. You know, we have a sort of an on again, off again French. <laughs> yeah, very and it's weird. on right now, but they have had an on again, off again friendship over the years. That's very true. Uh, I made myself uh, for, for this purpose. I actually made two of me. Uh, the first one I just said, uh, and and really what it's building on is what you say in the in the setup. So the setup was to introduce itself. I am Tom Merritt, host of Daily Tech News Show, longtime podcaster and author, and I'm originally from Greenville, Illinois, but I live in Los Angeles now. Uh, and in the course of my conversation with myself, I found out I have a three months old son. <laughs> uh, named, named Theo. Named Theo. Yeah. Yeah. I was 46 when my daughter was born. Yeah. <laughs> she uh, nobody knows her name yet. Yeah. I've got two amazing kids and I love modern family. I'm watching it for the first time with my wife. None of those things are true. And to 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 character AI's uh, be, uh to to their benefit, when you sign up, they make it very clear with big splash yeah, screens. None of this, this is, is real. This is going to tell you things that aren't true. Yeah. This is probably going to say offensive stuff. Just beware what you're getting into before you start this. And it warns you a bunch about that before you go start typing this stuff in that hey, I'm just some of, some of this stuff is nonsense. You know, for example, it tells me that that I'm uh, married to someone named Megan. Uh, when I asked myself why I thought I was married to Kim, he says I was previously married to Kim, but unfortunately <gasps> divorced. Oh. It took a while to get back into a single life. That's when I met Meg, and I've never been happier in my life. You know, like, my I, nope. I, I also did the same. Um, and my, my Sarah Lane AI has had a rough life, guys. <laughs> uh, oh, no. She, 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 she has a son. She's in some sort of addiction recovery um, oh, she wow. has dedicated her yeah. life to, you know, helping others. Yeah. And she's from like a family of four girls where I was like, nope, for sure you're an only child. Because I kept like <laughs> poking at her like, no, uh -huh. no, you're an only child. And you were born in 1976. No, no, no. I was born in 1985. And, <laughs> you know, my sister's names are like Melanie, Melissa, and there was some other M. So I was like, okay. It's weirdly <laughs> Different Sarah Lane. Different. Yeah. Not the same one.
Yeah. It's weirdly yeah. optimistic. It kind of drives me a little nuts. Uh, well, if you're a patron, uh, we're definitely going to talk about more of this on yeah. Good Day Internet because I, I created a 25-year-old version of myself, which is way more credible than, than the current one. Uh, but I also wanted to talk about this article on JSTOR Daily. It was posted back in May. Matthew Wills wrote an article called, When the Push Button Was New, People Were Freaked. The mundane interface between human and machine caused social anxiety in the late 19th century. And I just thought it was so reflective of all the anxieties we have about technology today. Uh, he refers to an article by Rachel Plotnick about worries in the late 1800s that push buttons would make human skills atrophy. If we're just able to push a button, we won't know how things work anymore. Uh <laughs> Uh, making the workings of machines effortless, opaque, and therefore unquestioned by consumers. Uh, remember that before electricity, uh, buttons triggered a spring mechanism, or there was a lever, like like in a mechanical typewriter or a piano, so you could feel and see how buttons worked. But electric buttons were just mystical. Uh, Plotnick quotes Dorothy Canfield Fisher, an educator and activist from 1916, who warned society that, quote, there is a great danger of coming to rely so entirely on the electric button that the wheels of initiative will be broken or at least become rusty from long disuse. Oh, I love <sighs> stuff like this so much. Love it. I mean, I, you know, I, it's it's funny. It, it's easy to sort of laugh at this and be like, people are, you know, worried about buttons. But this is very much the conversation that we have today about all sorts of other things that are like too automated. Now we're going to be, you know, that much farther from reality when we used to have to use our hands mm -hmm. and our oh, brains yeah. to make things happen. I have a feeling, you know, people had a similar sort of freak out when uh you know, housing or pl plumbing within your home became a thing mm -hmm. and you were no longer required <laughs> to maintain our it. Our legs will atrophy if we what don't have to walk do out to the, the outhouse. Right. Yes. There was something good about going out in the middle of snowy winter to do your business in the middle of the night. Wither the bucket maker. Should we never? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love this stuff, because we're almost always wrong about it. And, yeah. and it's, it's always true. If you complain about a certain thing, just dig around in the in history a little bit, and you'll find people complaining about the same thing. They just happen to be buttons instead of cell phones. Or yeah, it, it's a little perspective setting, and everybody thinks this time is different. Everybody always says, yeah. "Well, I I know people com complained about the wheel, <laughs> but this button for this is the one that will really bring down society." I mean, uh, in a way, I sometimes think of this in you know, I was thinking in terms of like, okay, well, what button could I push right now that I mean, it, they're almost all virtual, um, you know, that would be like, oh, you've done a horrible thing. And that's why you get like, you press a button like, I agree. And then the software program says, do you actually agree? Because <laughs> y'all, it's not like the 1800s. You're just pushing buttons with yeah, abandon. Like, know right. what you're pushing here, people. Maybe she was it's like right. We're still doing the same thing. Like, make sure you know what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. once you push that button, it's going to do a thing. Take it from Dorothy Canfield Fisher. That's right. That's right. <laughs> important stuff <laughs> uh well uh moving moving down to what might be going on south of our american border anyway our cohort dan Campos, who is based in mexico city has some details on an nft that led to the destruction of a frito frida Kahlo drawing hello friends of dtns here i come with some noticias interesantes on July 30th, the CEO of Brida NFT, Martin Mubarak, announced the digitalization of Frida Kahlo's drawing, Sinister Ghosts. The work was part of his personal collection and was valued at $10 million. After digitalization, it was minted as an NFT, and 10,000 of them were made available in PNG, videos, and GIFs. The CEO announced that 30% of the profits obtained from the sale of NFTs would be donated to organizations with social causes or museums. It is expected to raise more than 800 million pesos, which is around 40 million in US dollars, from the sale, quadrupling its original value. So far, everything seems normal, except for the fact that after transitioning Frida's work into the metaverse, the original physical piece was burned at a private event for those who bought one of those NFTs. There might be consequences, even though Mubarak owned the drawing. A decree was published in Mexico in 1984 in the official Gazette of the Federation, which declares that all the work of the painter is an artistic monument. And the intentional destruction of an artistic monument is a crime, even if the work is owned by an individual. The National Institute of Fine Arts and Literature is putting together a case against the CEO. For this and more news, suscríbete a Noticias de Tecnología Express, the Duolingo of Tech News. Back to you, amigos.
Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, an NFT that proves you don't own something because they burned it. That's that's wild. Uh, if you're feeling social, folks, you want to talk about that or anything else, get in touch with us on the socials at DTNS Show on Twitter and DTNS Picks with an X, DTNS PIX on Instagram. <laughs> All right, Amazon announced a bunch of new products and features today. So let's start with some updates to those voice features. The Amazon Voice Assistant, you know her name, is getting some notable features. You can now use voice commands to schedule things like smart home actions. So instead of having to use the app, you could say, turn off the lights in 10 minutes. Routines will able to be personalized based on who's talking as well. So if you've got a family and they all use the Assistant, you might say, read me my calendar, and it will read your calendar because it knows your voice, not another member of your household. You'll be able to see multiple smart home camera feeds at once on smart displays. That's nice if you do use that. Video sticky notes, that's new. Now let you leave a video message for other people in the house. You know, I might say like, hey, Tom and Scott, my roommates, <laughs> please do this. I will be out of the house for five hours. And there will be support for a pro Grammable switches, <laughs> gotta love those switches, so you can do things like turn off all the lights from a single switch or press a button to read the news. These all feel pretty marginal. They're good, but they're, you know, there's not one like, wow, they really made a, a leap. It's more like, yeah, they keep adding good stuff that slowly yeah. improves it. Yeah, not I mean, I, yeah. I'm a routine person when it comes to Amazon stuff. Um, I have quite a few of them. Having a little bit more ability to do more stuff, great. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing's... Super groundbreaking as far as what my home routine would be. But um, sticking with voice stuff, Amazon Roadside Assistant can now be accessed from that same A app, Echo Auto, or another Echo device. So you could say, call Roadside Assistance, and the assistant will contact a Roadside Assistance provider for help. Users pay for services when they're used, either by phone or through Stripe. But there's no subscription fee. So you know, if you think you might need this, it would be kind of like... A, you know, a, a case by case basis. Echo Auto users can also get notifications in their car or through the app when uh, in a Whole Foods um, situation when your order is ready. And I know a lot of you people use Whole Foods, so that would be a nice perk. Now, this quoting you the amount on the roadside assistance, I could not find clarification yet of like, but if I'm in an emergency situation, they just send. The am they send the ambulance right they they send the emergency they send the first responders they they don't wait for my payment to go through the payment would be if I want a tow truck or something I hope anyway yeah I, I'm guessing they that that would be true and also work the same way it currently does in your house if you yell it to your echo I think it's I think it does its best with the connection it has yeah yeah to get the right call in and you're not expected to sort of wait or pay or but yeah I, I think this is mostly meant for like oh I had a flat tire can you send someone out to fix yeah. it yeah it's gonna cost you 80 bucks that cool yeah that's fine all right good yep right right uh, we also got a load of new Echoes. The Echo Dot got a redesign that adds a larger speaker in the same size case, a little bassier sounding. It's nicer sounding. Uh, the Echo Dot with clock got a higher resolution display. It's brighter and can show more info, like scrolling of track names, things like that. Also added an accelerometer and a temperature sensor and an AZ2 neural edge processor that enables more tap controls. Before you could tap to turn off the alarm, now you can tap to pause and resume music, dismiss timers, a few other things. All these new Echo Dots, as well as older fourth gen Echo Dots as of October 20th, will be able to act as Eero Wi-Fi extenders if you have an Eero mesh system. So you have to have the mesh system first, but if you do, you can add them to the system. Each Echo will add up to a thousand square feet of coverage per device at speeds up to a hundred megabits per second. So not the fastest mesh on your network, uh, but if you have a little corner where you have a dot, it might help extend the coverage. Both the new dot and the new dot with clock are available now shipping next month. The dot is 50 bucks. The dot with clock is 60 bucks. There are also two new Echo Dot Kids featuring owl and dragon designs coming next month as well those are 60 bucks each and the echo studio now comes in a new color white uh and all the echo studio models are getting a software update that adds spatial audio and a wider frequency range so they should sound better that's a price hike i think for the dot uh just the yep. basic dot no clock it was what 29 30 bucks whatever I think it was 30 before. yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's um 20 20 increase folks for your dot 
Uh, on the hardware side, they showed off some Kindle stuff, specifically the Kindle Scribe. It has a 10.20 inch, 300 PPI front lit e ink screen and a basic pen stylus that doesn't need to be charged or anything. That's part of why it's basic, I suppose. You can mark up Kindle books, PDFs, save web pages, Word stuff, more, all that kind of thing. Uh, think the uh, there's other tablets in the market that do this. Uh, it's 5.8 millimeters thick, weighs 430 grams. Battery life is three to 12 weeks. It's pretty good, depending on whether you're uh, writing or reading more. Uh, Pre-order now if you want to for $399.99, and it will be shipping by the holidays. Is the quote. A premium pen is available for 30 that adds a customizable button and an eraser sensor. But they're kind of going after the remarkable a little bit. I oh, think, yeah, here. they yeah. sure are. They're remarkable, too, which um, I had reviewed on a couple a couple of a go live with it, um, which I love. Um, but one of one of the things, uh, you know, from my review and I think a lot of other people echo the sentiment is. It's very much a more of a creation tool and less of a you know sit back mm. e reader type thing. Amazon seems to be going after both, saying, "Well, it's an e reader, but it's also something that can do all the kind of things that you'd like to do if you're going to be you know a little bit more you know using this as a work tool, especially if you need a stylus, mm -hmm. you know, down to that whole eraser sensor, which the remarkable too, you know, that that was very cool six months ago." When you effectively monopolize a market, uh, you can include that in your 10.2 inch e ink Very <laughs> true. device. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that Amazon doesn't seem to be doing is undercutting remarkable at all. You know, 400 bucks. This yeah, is price something that, yep. Yeah. I mean, you, if you want it, you want it. But, um, you know, it's not something, you know, f for somebody who's just going to be, you know, reading a book here and there. I have latency questions, but those will have to come once review units hit and stuff. I, I, if it's fast, that'll be great, and it's something I'm interested in. But well, uh, Amazon uh, did not stop with the hardware announcements. We also have the Halo Rise, a bedside sleep tracker. Doesn't have a mic. Doesn't have a camera. If you're like, mm, I don't want anything watching me while I sleep. Doesn't have those things, but it does have motion sensors to detect movements and breathing patterns. You know, as you move around through the night, the way that you're breathing, and to discern between REM sleep, light and deep sleep. It can also log temperature, humidity, and light to give you a sense of, eh, if I didn't have a good sleep last night, maybe this is why, or I did have a good sleep and this is why. 400 LEDs and a speaker that can be used as an alarm. So, you know, it, 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 can, it can watch you. It can also wake you up. It ships later this year for $140, along with six months of Amazon's premium Halo service, which you're going to need going forward if you want to keep using these features. It, it sounds like the name of the upcoming Halo follow-up to Halo Infinite. Halo <laughs> Rise, coming from Microsoft. Yeah, you cannot Microsoft. play Halo on this Halo because it has no, no screen. No, sir. Uh, I, I like this kind of sleep tracker better than the thing you have to wear, personally. That's just personal taste, though. When Same. I was using the Fitbit Versa 2 for some time, um, you know, and I've, I've since moved on to the, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting a call on my Apple Watch. Uh, okay, Apple, it's not about you right now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I really do, I, the, the REM, the light, and the deep sleep, if you're really kind of into, like, just like you want to be, like, into sleep metrics, this kind of thing has always been really interesting to me, and that's why I would wear my my watch overnight. Some people just can't do that, um, and I really didn't want to do it either. I just felt like that was the only way for it to really track me. If this is anywhere near that, I think especially if you have any sort of, not just insomnia, but just kind of questions about how well you're sleeping, is the you know, is my comforter too heavy or, you know, what can I do to, to make that part of my life that I have very little control over once I'm asleep better? I love it. For 140 bucks, worth it. We also have a new Echo Auto, which is smaller, uh, has a fabric covering now and should be easier to mount on a lot of vehicles. Has five microphones, down from eight. But the algorithms are improved to work better over background noise, like if you're running the AC in your car, if there's road noise, music in your car, maybe the windows are open. It also moved the audio jack to a breakout box near the USB plug, which could help cable management depending on your setup. You do still need to pair it with a phone to work, so you got to have your phone, and it sells for $55. This is great for the person who needs it. I'm not sure who they are where they don't have CarPlay or another voice activation thing on their phone that they're happy just using, but they need a dongle because you need your phone for this. But apparently there's enough people who use it. So, you know, yeah. they're upgrading it. Price isn't uh, bad. 
Back to Eero, all Eero Plus subscribers will be able to add a backup internet connection that Eero can automatically switch to if the main connection goes down. I will probably take advantage of this uh, because I'm always unplugging my main Eero hub and into a different modem if the main connection goes down. I won't have to do that anymore. Uh, the example given was using a cellular connection from a phone. Uh, the feature will be available from select ISPs. So you might want to check with your ISP. You might just get it for free. Or if you subscribe to Eero Plus, which is $10 a month or $100 a year. Uh, then there's Astro, Amazon's home robot offered by invite only for $1,500. Been around for a year, but it got some new features, including pet detection. So if it sees something it thinks is a dog or a cat, it can send a video of it to you. Uh, it also got the ability to check specific windows and doors in your house and tell if something is unusual, like a door that's supposed to be closed is open. They can take a picture of that and send it to you. Well, good news, too. The third generation Fire TV Cube has a cloth cover. That's not the big news, but it has a cloth cover. <laughs> uh, HDMI input for passing your cable box through it. Wi-Fi 6E. It's $140. And there's also an Alexa Voice Remote Pro for $35. That's sold separately. That has a backlight, uh, programmable buttons, remote finder uh, that triggers uh, you know, th th think of it as like the way your phone can find certain devices, that kind of idea. Where's my and remote? The, bing. Yeah, yeah bing. bing. There it is. Yeah, the Echo Show 15 will get a Fire TV widget to collect all the streaming TV apps on your Echo Show, and you'll be able to pair the Show 15 with the Fire TV voice remote. It's a nice little uh, combo, I think. Oh, finally, look at this. Ring. We can't go without Ring. No. Ring announced its bird eye, bird's eye view. It's a brand new feature that can show you both the path someone. No, took it's an old get... feature, but it's oh, coming it to new stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thought it wasn't. It was brand new. Anyway, this thing uh, can tell you where you uh, the path of somebody who uh, or the the path somebody took to get to your door. Okay, that's coming to the Ring Spotlight Cam Pro and Cam Plus. Both of them will be available in battery, plug-in, solar, and wired variations. The Amazon-owned Blink introduced a wired floodlight camera for hundred bucks and thirty dollars pan and tilt mount for the blink mini camera lots of stuff lots of yeah. announcements amazon i would say good what in the channels yeah. I'll, I'll be honest though no like drones that follow you around even astro was just an update uh, this was a more mundane amazon uh announcement good stuff in there uh, i'm not criticizing it but but yeah I, I didn't we didn't get those like crazy concept things as much as we I we mean, even the, the crazy concept robot is like, no, it can in, it, mm. you yeah. know, say it's hi to It's the same one from last yeah. year. It just can <laughs> be like, that seems like a cat. <laughs> feels a like picture. a trend this year. A lot of the major conferences have been iterative, not boring, but just kind of standard. You know, yeah. none yeah. of them are doing anything crazy. And this, this isn't really an exception. Well, speaking of robots, uh, Chipotle's tortilla-making robot, you might know it as Chippy, is coming to a Chipotle restaurant near you. That is, if you live near Fountain Valley, California. Chippy will be making tortilla chips starting next month with feedback from customers and also workers helping to inform a, an eventual national rollout if things go well. Chipotle is also piloting a demand-based AI cooking system, that's for staff, with the goal to get ahead of order demand at peak time. So Chipotle's pilot is currently active at eight Orange County, California locations. Ah, Orange County, getting the robots, getting mm. the robot burritos. Yeah. This is yep. another one where it's moving slower than I thought. Like we've been covering this for, it feels like 10 years. Uh, the, you know, the robots showing up in restaurants, uh, but we had yeah. Flippy. The, the the hamburger Flippy. making robots out there. Yeah, we got, we have Chippy. We got Chippy. Yeah, yeah. Slowly Orange County coming. could change. Orange County could change the operating computer or something. They don't have to stay Orange County forever. If you're gonna have more robots than people, not get a on lot that of oranges. Change. Maybe yeah. robot Aren't County. you glad you're a robot? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, somebody who isn't a robot, and we sure are glad about that, is Scott Johnson. Scott, oh, thank, th thank you for staying humanoid. Um, let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Well, I do dream of electric sheep, so there's some concern. Uh, anyway, I have got a lot going on, but what I'd like to point people to this week is a little different. We have a show we've been doing since 2009, October of that year, called Film Sack. And on this anniversary, I uh, just want to remind people who love movies, stuff from the 80s, garbage from the 50s, even newer things. Uh, and a bunch of friends sitting around talking about them. You might really like that show. So check it out. Filmsack.com will get you there. Uh, of course, Filmsack, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I think you'll like it. One of the hosts is from Orange County. Is yeah. he a robot? That's true. 
That's Tune in and find out. We wonder sometimes. Ooh, ooh the plot thickens. <laughs> uh, special thanks to Cavo Conrad. Cavo is one of our lof- t- top <laughs> lifetime supporters for DTNS. I got so excited. Thanks for all the years of support, Cavo. Could Cavo, not do it Cavo, without Cavo, you. Cavo, Cavo, Cavo. Cavo, Cavo. Nice. Could be you tomorrow. Patreon.com slash DTNS. Indeed. Speaking of patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. We're going to be talking more about our insane AI versions of ourselves. <laughs> but you can catch DTNS live Monday through Friday. If you can join us, we'd love to have you join us live. 4 p.m. Eastern, 20 hundred UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we are back to win it all again tomorrow with Justin Robert Young joining us. Don't miss it. See you soon. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>